What is it? Is what I do. I love it. I can tell. Some people live for it. Some people, yeah, t- I tell you, Mike, to be, I don't know if you know this, but some people are scared to death of it. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, because you don't know what's coming. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mike, what do you think about all that drama in the Middle East? I'm not going to go. I'm just joking. Right, I was saying, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Round up, family. Greetings, class. Greetings. That's right. Thank you for joining us. Oh, man, I got to take that off the thing. That's not yet. Thank you for joining us, Roundupers. I'll give everybody a few moments to come on. Mike, tell me real quick while we're waiting for my Roundup homies to come on. Where are you? I am here in beautiful St. Paul, Minnesota, where it's finally not snowing. <laughs> finally. <laughs> it took until Cinco de Mayo, right? But uh, we're here. So, Mike, for my Roundup homies that don't know about Minnesota, is it the last of the snow? <laughs> My fingers are crossed, man. You don't know. It's, it's like I've seen snow in June, so you know, I you know, I know, I know, it couldn't. There's a chance it might not be over, but I'm thinking it is. You know, you know, my knee is telling me that the snow is done. So, oh boy. <laughs> Round up, menace. Make my boy used to say, "You're going to menace snow to," because I used to live there for three years. Yeah. It snowed up until June when I was there. Six feet yeah. of snow on the ground. That's cool. Roundup, thank you for joining us. This is Chris Haskins. My mission and ministry is to raise your financial literacy through real estate investing and entrepreneurship. And trying to fulfill my mission, I ran across this young brother, Mike Adams. And unbelievable how he has the same mission to raise your financial literacy. So I had to get him on here just to kind of show you guys what this dude's doing some amazing content so mike thank you for joining us my friend yes absolutely happy to be here mike just give us the forty thousand foot view of your background before we get into velocity banking craziness <clears throat> yeah, absolutely um well i guess the the short version i'll give you the short and sweet you know, i'm an ex i what i i dubbed myself an ex-military grunt so i was in the army for six years and then okay. spent time in corporate sales and advertising and uh, I guess what brought me to entrepreneurship is my wife and I, we struggled for a long time and we have a set of, of twins, they're six now, uh, but we struggled for years to bring them into the world. And once we brought them here, you know, after a couple of weeks, I had to go back to my job and I was working 70, 80 hour weeks, high stress, high drama, and then coming home and, and trying to do, you know, you know, be with my kids. And it was like, it, it was tough. So. Um, it prompted us to really want to create something that would allow us to control our time, you know, so we could raise our kids together. And so that's when we launched our first business. And I was doing um, direct sales and high ticket direct sales for many years. Um, we were selling uh, business, to business to business or business to consumer business to consumer. So what we were selling was it was a it was real estate. So, you know, kind of kind of in your world a little bit. So we were teaching people financial literacy, business ownership, real estate investing, uh, tips, techniques, strategies, you know, things like that. And what I really gravitated towards was the financial literacy aspect. You know, um, growing up in a single parent home, uh, you know, the only thing that I learned about money growing up, Chris, was that we didn't have any, (laughs) you know, that was it. Like we don't have any. And so, you know, things like taxes and interest, insurance, you know, all the different things that we have to deal with as adults in our everyday life, I never learned anything about it. So even though when I was in corporate America, we made good money, you know, every dollar that came in the front door was going right out the back door with all of our different expenses and bills and things like that. We were never really getting ahead. Mm -hmm. And so once I got connected to the uh, real estate network, it was like, okay, I'm learning all these new techniques and learning these new strategies. You know, it, it was powerful, you know, and then it was really empowering to help other people acquire these strategies nice. and so for many years it was through that particular curriculum and course but over the last year i've branched off to just focusing on the financial literacy part of it you know business ownership and financial literacy and uh, helping people learn you know how this stuff actually works so that way you know instead of just getting you know raked over the coals by the banks uh you know for interest and all that stuff over the years we can actually uh you know kind of you know you know Take advantage of that situation, save that money in interest, and then reinvest it into yourself, your business, or your retirement. Oh man, save that money in interest. I presume you have some mental numbers in your mind about how much the average American pays out in interest. I mean, is that something that you kind of does it 
do you have a picture of that just over time teaching what you teach? Yeah. Um, well, the last time when we were talking specifically about the curriculum, um, I was highlighting just the heavy debt loads and, and we're seeing that now, right? Like when you look at what's going on, like right now with this, with the Corona stuff and all of a sudden, you know, people are out of work for a month and it's over, right? Like for a lot of people, it's over, you know, mm -hmm. one month with no pay. And it just kind of shows how thin, you know, everybody really was. And it's because of the high, high debt, loads that people have right now mm -hmm. and so some of the stats i was using back when i was speaking in front of large rooms and uh we used to do um like face to face right like instead of doing being on which is super cool about youtube it's like i could just be in front of my computer you know back in the day it was get, you know get you know, a bunch of ads you'll know, get people in the room and then you're standing in front of the room kind of doing it mm -hmm. and so uh, those numbers might vary from what it is now but the bottom line is people were shelling out depending on who you were tens of thousands of dollars annually in interest you know mm. um and that's again money that's just going right to the bank without mm. doing anything for you i don't know mike i think how old are you by the way i just turned 40. that's right 40 but congratulations my brother i made it <laughs> come on over come on over come on over my, okay. as I, I think i'm just like is it a thing to where as you age, you just start thinking about this, or was that something that tripped you? Like, you know what? I'm making a change. Was there a certain scenario that happened for you to say, I need to make this a priority? Yeah. Um, and I think it just ties in with, you know, when we launched our business, you know, I needed to replace, like, in order for me to get out of my job, I needed to replace a six figure salary, right? I needed well, to some people like, work their whole life and they just like oh, another year, another year, and they work their whole life and just drudgery it all out. They don't even change. Yeah. Yeah. And and when we had launched, I, I hadn't made that change yet. You know, the change for me happened when I just started seeing the results. You know, people were coming to us because they wanted to learn about real estate investing, they wanted to learn about flipping houses, things like that, but they didn't have their financial house in order, you mm -hmm. know. And um, they had a rough scenario, high debt, you know, negative cash flow scenarios going on without mm -hmm. even really understanding what that meant. But yet they want to go out there and try to take on more debt. They want rental properties, you know, things like that. But they're already buried over here. You know, like they're already just totally buried. And now, but but in their mind, they want the rentals. And so it started popping in my mind, like, you know, people don't need to take on new debt right now. What they need to do is figure out how to get this debt handled and get their financial house right and then come back around from a much stronger position and you know go for those rentals or do the real estate however they want to do it and so it just it started popping to me like people are just don't know these concepts they don't really know how it works and so that's what just kind of brought it to the top for me is because i was like i didn't know this stuff you know i made really good money out there and where you know didn't have much to show for it because it just went out the back door you know, how can I help other people that are making good money just see things a little bit differently to where they can make better choices for themselves and for their business? It's so weird you say that. We're going to be talking about Roundup Family. We're talking about Velocity Banking. It's so weird you say that about you made a lot of money. I'm reading this book now, The, the Five Rituals of Wealth. And it just has a quote in here. You can't earn your way to wealthy. You can't earn them. People think like the biggest lie people think is that they're going to make more money. They're going to be wealthy. That's right. And what you're talking about is strategies. And what I learned too is like, I don't make that much more than other people. It's just what, what I do with what we earn. Yeah. And it allows you to keep more of the money that you actually make. There you go. That's so it. Mike, what, what, is you make is what you keep. <laughs> I heard that growing up, but I'm like, eh, I don't care. I'm making money and whatever. Yeah. What does that even mean? Yeah. <laughs> go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, what you're right. Mean? You hear that stuff and it's like, yeah, but what does that really mean? I just need to focus on making more money. And, you know, and you nailed it. It's like you cannot just earn your way to wealth. There needs to be, you know, you're playing offense. You got to play some defense as well, you know, and make sure that you're taking care of home base. Is the velocity banking going to be categorized into the defense? And we'll let you loose on this thing in a minute. <clears throat> yeah, I, I guess I would. Um, however, it can be applied to both. You know, Most plenty of people in my network, you know, once you start accumulating assets and they have debt attached to like properties with mortgages or debt services, you can use these kind of techniques to rapidly pay down um, debt on investment properties as well. 
Um, but yeah, I would definitely, um, for most people that I'm working with, these are people that have a mortgage, they have student loans, probably some credit cards, you know, maybe a couple car loans, you know, things like that. So they have all these loans and all this interest going out. So mm -hmm. it starts off as a defensive strategy where you want to get that debt down and save that interest. But then when you're putting that savings into investments, you can now use it to play, I'll call it maybe some defensive offense. Right. <laughs> We're able to go offensive, but yet save money on interest there. Gotcha. Well, Mike, I don't want to hold you back, man. I feel like I got the horse at the reins. I'm holding you at the reins, man, before you go let you go on this velocity banking. Go ahead, brother. What is this craziness you're talking about? Yeah. Well, I guess the, the short and sweet on um, what is velocity banking. Uh, velocity banking is simply put, it's a strategy that allows you to pay off your amortized debt. So when I say amortized, that's when you're talking about things with fixed interest payments. So you got like your mortgage, you know, part of that payment is principal, part of its interest. And it's, fixed. you know, for the life of that loan, it's fixed interest. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, on a 30 on a year mortgage, you know, if your mortgage was at 5%, and I know right now rates are lower, right? If you can still qualify for a mortgage, uh, rates are much, much lower. But at a 5% mortgage over 30 years, you will pay double for the house, okay? So you'll pay double at 5%. And so with Velocity Banking, what we're doing is we're showing people how with their same income and with their same cash flow, they can pay off that same debt, that 30-year debt in about, seven years you know five to seven years uh, without refinancing without you know sending in extra or anything like that um uh, using their same resources that they have right now and from there you know if you can take a 30-year debt and pay it off in seven years mm. um you have just saved num number one you've saved 23 years of pain and suffering uh dealing with that <laughs> loan um but when it comes Slavery. to the brass taxes, oh, it's brutal. And in the brass taxes, you're saving a boatload of money in interest. You know, um, one of the things that I would highlight about loans, okay, and, and most people kind of have a concept about loans, but they don't really dive deep. You know, like most people are just kind of looking <laughs> at that payment, right? Like, all right, Chris, I can afford that payment. And as long as I can afford that, we're good. I don't really, I'm good. Like, here's that stack of paperwork they give you when you buy the house. And you're like, I don't really need to look at that as long as I can afford this payment. And you know, what's the old saying? The devil's in the details, right? Mm -hmm. Like you go through that paperwork and you see how much interest you're laying out month after month going right to the bank. And by using velocity banking, you are able to just slash, you know, like save, you know, two thirds uh, in some cases of that interest pay off the property, actually own the house. You know, a lot of folks live in their property and because of all the refinancing and things like that, that the banks, you know, try to get us to do, they spend the majority of the time they live in their property in the front end of the loan. Mm. And you know- Paint like that picture loan. a little bit, Mike. Paint that picture, or just uh, generally speaking over per an average person's life refinancing. <laughs> hey, your, I feel your stomach hurting as you're thinking. It is. It's, it's, it, you know, and I'll say this, you know, about refinancing. I'm not anti-refinancing per se, because there's always reasons mm -hmm. to refinance, right? You know, you can improve cash flow, consolidate, you know, things like that. And there's always reasons. But most of the time, the bank is coming to you. Like, let's say you've got your fresh mortgage and you've been paying on this thing now for five years, making your payments on time. And typically the bank's going to reach out to you, send you a letter saying, hey, Chris, great job. You've been making these payments. Good job. You know, how about we refinance you into, uh, let's refinance this and we'll save you 50 bucks. Or we'll save you 80 bucks on your mortgage payment. And so people will say, yes, let's do this. And they'll refinance back to the 30 year term again. And yes, you're saving some money on that payment maybe, right? But you have just reset the amortization on the loan. Now, what does that mean? When you're making your very first payment on your mortgage, that, that payment, the highest percentage of interest is on that very first payment. So typically you're talking about like 90% of that payment, you know, 80, 90% of your first payment is pure interest going to the bank. And so when you refinance, not only are you paying fees to refinance, but then you're going back to day one, when you send in that next payment, a bit, the bigger chunk of that payment's going straight to interest rate to the bank. And so that's the trap that they keep people in. 
and it keeps you in the front end of that loan where the higher percentage of your payment is going right to the bank and in interest, not actually knocking down the principal of the debt. You know, I still get those letters from uh, my lenders talking about you got a hundred thousand dollars in equity. Why not tap into it? You know, and I think it's always for me, whenever I get something from the bank, I'm always like, mm, is this good for me or is it good for you? Well, you know the answer. <laughs> you know, I know. You know, the bottom line is everything that we know about the banks, we learn from the banks. Mm. Wow. Everything. Like, you know, we don't learn about money in school, you know. Um, and I remember reading Rich Dad Poor Dad, you know, um, way back yep. in the day. And, you know, I remember him, or maybe it was one of his videos where he was talking about, like, when are we going to learn about money? You know, and it's like, well, you're not going to learn about that in school. They don't let you. They don't let you teach on that, you know, in school. Um, what we learn about loans and about the banks comes directly from the banks. And what do we know? You know, like what we've seen since <clears> 2008 <throat> is the banks are about the banks. Yeah. You know, and the banks are going to teach their employees to do things that not that not to benefit us, the people, but it's to benefit and make the bank more money and interest. Wow. I heard you talk about um, amortization, Mike. But when you're paying back, we still have to pay back the money that we borrowed and the interest. I mean, you do pay back more. I mean, what is it? So when we, I heard you say you're paying back twice as much, but we still have to pay back the principal. I mean, pay the principal too on top of that, right? Because we're paying interest and principal. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Yeah. And like the goal of velocity banking is to get more of your money knocking down the principal, right? Like if we can have more of your payment knocking down the principal, well, the, the, the total amount of interest that you'll pay over the life of the loan will be less because you'll pay it off quite a bit sooner. And so, and, and depending on how deep you want me to go, you know, yeah, let's it. do it. We got a few minutes. What well, I want to know, Mike, who would, to, generally speaking, who was this for? Because, I mean, obviously, this is not for everybody. It, it's worked for me over the past. I didn't even know what I was doing. I was just <laughs> chunk some money down. And I'm like, when I ran into your content, I'm like, there's a name for this. Yeah, yeah, you've been doing it. You know, and it's called <laughs> different things. You know, it's called different things when different companies have different formats for it, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but who this is really good for <laughs> is people that have a mortgage. Typically, like for my clients, it's typically mortgages and student loans. Right? Student loans. Oh, man. Student loans. Like how many people do we know that are coming out of college with 80, 90, 100? I talked to a lady last week, 140,000. 140, 140 oh, grand in student loan debt. Did she have a doctorate? <clears throat> uh, she had a master's. I, I was, I was, yeah, I was being very serious. I'm like, damn, I hope yeah. she have a doctorate with that. I don't know. But even still, she's buried. You know, um, I, she, she's literally buried. And um, and and the problem, obviously, we know is that you know you you pay that hundred grand to get that that degree, and now you're not able to find a job, right, or find employment that's going to pay Income. you enough to really dig into that. You know, the average person takes about 17 years to pay off their student loan. And if you have a student loan that's 100, 140 grand, and you're making 40, 50 grand a year, plus you got mm. a car, plus you got a mortgage, plus you got credit card bills. If anything happens, anything medical, it's like, how are you yeah. ever supposed to get all from underneath that debt? Is it a strategy that you can help people? Because because I've looked at the numbers regarding uh, the average income for our country, right? I know what that is. It hasn't gone up more than the ten thousand dollars over the last forty years. Dog. I mean, right. I know I can pull it up right here. Fifty, to, you know, it's like between fifty and sixty thousand. That's right. Period. That's what the numbers are. However, cars, uh, education, uh, colleges, houses have gone up incrementally, exponentially. Right. So I'm like, it, it, yeah. it's kind of it gets it gets to my spirit. And that's why I want to share your message. Yes, I'm a big believer in entrepreneurship, business owners, doing houses, flipping all this stuff. But when you really boil it down, it's nothing but finances, Mike. We can't do so much offense. You can only work so much to create income. And when you're talking this velocity banking, I feel like you kind of get in people's minds and moving the chessboard with the chess pieces, Mike. <clears throat> yeah. Well, and you nailed it. I, I remember talking about a very similar stat, and I believe it. There was a, a chart that I used to show documenting that, like the average about 50, 60 grand. And the price of a four year degree was about, back in the 80s, it was about 50 grand to get that four year degree that would get you that $50,000 job. Now mm -hmm. that that same job, 50 grand you're making, 
but how much <clears> did it cost to get that degree? And now you're talking closer to a hundred thousand plus higher interest X, Y, Z. So yeah, that's, that's absolutely accurate. And so people that have the loans uh, and this works on any type of loan. So mortgage loans, gotcha. car loans, but typically it's the mortgage and the student loan. Those are typically the two big ones that people are looking to get rid of when they want to do this strategy. So what are they? What are they? Where do they get started, Mike? What would you? What are going to be? What are going to be some of your suggestions for my roundovers? I know you got a special gift for them, if as long as they stay on this uh, broadcast here. But where do they get started, Mike? <clears throat> yeah. Um. Well, the bottom line is this, right? You know, and you nailed it already. Is that we still have to pay back the principal, right? Uh, so if you have a thirty-year mortgage, even if we're able to cut into some of that interest, we still got to pay back that principal. Hundred thousand. Whatever, yeah, hundred thousand dollars. Just for conversation's sake. <clears throat> okay, so let's let's say it's a hundred thousand dollars in interest uh, and a hundred thousand uh, dollars in principal, right? Okay. Uh, so let we can just use that. And so you still need to make more money than you spend. Um, that's probably the number one thing that people want to know is, you know, can I do this for my situation? And the number one prerequisite to doing something like this is that you must have positive monthly cash flow. So mm. it all starts with a budget. And if somebody has negative cash flow and you being in real estate, you know, negative cash flow, we don't like that. You know, uh, that, that's not don't something do that. like, that's, don't do that. that's the fast track to going broke. So, you know they were teaching that though, Mike. I learned that's I, I cut my teeth on negative cash flow in two thousand five, six, seven from some dummies that were teaching that stuff back in the day. Just by yeah. the way, FYI, isn't that something? Well, like, yeah, <laughs> I didn't mean to, yeah. You, you got me thinking that was negative cash flow. You know, it's yeah. crazy, and and I know like back in the eighties, there was it was a, a drive to try to like buy properties that were losing value, like buy these properties because you're going to get some kind of write off, uh, and oh, but man. things, but we can't count on that kind of stuff. You know, it's like now you're bringing in the government and you never know what they're going to do when it comes to the tax codes. And if you're, if you're buying stuff on that kind of a strategy, it's like someone someone way up here could change something. And now you're stuck like Chuck, you know. So, yeah, you know what you need for the strategies, you need positive cash flow. Positive and cash then flow. from there, you need a line of credit. Before we get there, Mike, what about my roundup family members that are? Wow, I'm thinking. We're saying some words that have a lot of weight to them. Positive cash flow. I mean, that is, you know, it's just like, yeah, go out there and get you some positive cash flow. I mean, it's a little more to it. Is this something that we're talking about looking at our lives? Because I know about me. I know I've been broke. I've had big dollars in the bank. I've been broke. Uh, being broke taught me my to make sure that my expenses are low. So I've been, I've got, if I took my shirt off, I got bullet wounds and stabs from learning over the years, right? Yeah. What are you, where do they start with that, Mike? Is it cutting expenses? Is it looking for extra income or is it, what, what are we, where do they mentally? Yeah, uh, great question. And it, it depends, you know, like with, with some people, um, and again, depending on the person, depending on you know, like what I call is like somebody's investor profile. Like some people are just going to be more, um, you know, apt to wanting to focus on increasing their income and other folks are going to be more, you know, Hey, I can cut expenses, you know? And so it's truly, it's a combination of both. Uh, both of them serve to increase your cash flow. Like, you know, if you're, let's say your, your monthly expenses are five grand and you have, you know, $7,000 of net income coming in every single month, well, you got positive, you know, $2,000 in cash flow. So either A, if you wanted to increase that number, either A, you would decrease your expenses, you bring your, those 5,000 down to 4,000, well, now you got 3,000 in positive cash flow. Or you can go out there and launch a business. For some people, it's pick up extra work or do some extra overtime or something like that, and now you're making more money, and that would as well increase your cash flow. So you know, for me, it's a combination of both. Uh, some people lean towards one or the other, but typically you, know, you wanna do a little bit of both to increase that number. Got you. I said, sounds like we need to kind of do before we even get started on this, Mike. We need to look at ourselves in the mirror to kind of see what we can either live without or what we can kind of increase. Is that where we're at? You gotta let go of that Hulu, man. <laughs> you, you got you gotta let go of the Hulu. You know, that's you know, like I have a budgeting sheet that I give away on my website, um, and I talk about it in my videos because sometimes we just don't know where our money's going. And I think for me, that was the number one thing. Like in corporate America, it's like we were just making money. So my wife and I were just 
you know, buying, we had vehicles, we had all kinds of stuff, student loans, we had all this stuff going on. And so money's coming in and then money's just going out. And we're just thinking, hey, as long as I covered all the bills, I'm good. I'm, good. I'm all I'm good. good. You know, uh, even though we were slowly racking up some credit card debt. So, you know, clearly we weren't good. You know what I'm saying? Um, but that um, that that's part of my bullet holes, you know, in, in learning is, is, you know, we were just making money and spending money. And as long as the phone wasn't ringing and that was kind of the barometer I was using to, you know, gauge my budget. And that's definitely not how you want to do it. You know, when you start making more money, you really need to pay attention to where that money is going and how you're actually utilizing that money. And Say that again, Mike. That is so big. Say that again, please. Oh, God, I forgot what I just said. Um, <laughs> when you start making more money, you got to know where it's going to go. got to know where it's going, man. <laughs> it's like, man, that was so good. I forgot. Uh, no, yes. I mean, you got to know where your money's going. Because if you don't know where your money's going, it's going to go away. Away from you. It's so it's beautiful. Gonna it's going to go right to the bank. Round up. One second, Mike. Round up. If you're just joining us, I'm hanging out with Mike Adams, financial literacy coach. Would I say fair? Mentory, uh, consultant, Mike? Yeah. I'm, I'm called many things. You know, coach, <laughs> consultant, good friend, you know, all that stuff. Thank you for joining us. Round up. If you just joined us, Mike, could you drop some nuggets on us about velocity banking? So if you're just cranking in, the, the, he just started about, he just went over the first pillar, I would say, would be uh, you have to earn more than you have going out. Is that is that where we at, Mike? More, uh, you have to have pa positive cash flow. Is that where we at, number one? Yes. Yeah. In order to implement the strategy, you must make, it starts, it really, number one is starting with your budget, you know, and just knowing where your funds are going. And especially as you start making more money, you really, you just got to, this is just one of those things where you just got to have the financial discipline to take discipline. the little bit of extra time to track your expenses and track where your money's going. Because it's for the clients that I've worked with, most of the time when I give them my budgeting sheet, you know, things that are on my budgeting sheet, they're just like, oh, I didn't even think of that. Oh, wow. I didn't even think about, you know, that I got to pay to park, you know, every single day for my job. I got to pay, you know, $10 to park. You know, I didn't even think about adding that to my budget. It's like, well, that's money going out, right? That's an expense. You know, mm -hmm. it's like so really just knowing, you know, on average where you're at every single month is incredibly important. It and is. So you got to mind your money. Uh, otherwise, it's going to again, it's going to go. You know, if we're not taking care of our money and paying attention to where it's going, it's going to go somewhere that you don't want it to go. Somebody else will. Right. They'll mind it for you. Go to the bank. All right. <laughs> uh, the bank will. Yeah. Round up. Get your questions in the box for Mike down here. I had a million questions for him the first time I talked to him, too. Mike. OK, what's next? No, I'm, I'm sorry. Do I see the question somewhere on here? Uh, they, I'll put them up. You'll see them here. I'll pop up here. But oh, uh, if if you have a thing, I don't know what your screen is, but if you click on the left side, you'll see it. But I'll be able to bring them up here. They'll come up. OK, cool, cool. Yeah. Or when it's time for that. OK, sorry about that. Yeah, well, sure about you. Looking for questions. Uh, but so I guess the crux of the strategy, and again, this is where it's, this is unconventional, right? Because you know, most of us are taught, and I guess one of the core concepts is what is the difference between a line and a loan, right? Like what's the difference between a line of credit and a loan? You know, and I know you know the answer, right? Uh, but uh, most people, when you hit them with that, it's like, well, what is the difference? You know, I know there is a difference, but what is it? And the number one thing about, I guess, the main difference that I like to highlight is that a loan is a one-way lending tool, right? So you can take out a loan, and we're, and we're familiar with loans, right? Your student loan, mortgage loan, the bank gives you a bunch of money, and then so you got a loan, and now you got a fixed payment that you're paying back with interest. That's a loan. and But it's only a one-way lending instrument, meaning when I send in my payment to the loan, right? You know, sure, I'm creating some equity there. I'm dropping down the balance on that loan by a little bit, paying interest. But once that money goes in, I cannot redraw on that money, right? Like when we're talking about a mortgage, sure, if you paid it down far enough, you could redraw on it. If you have equity there, you can get a HELOC or a HE loan. You know, again, things are changing now regarding all that stuff right now. Um, but that'd be the only way to redraw on it. Once you send in that extra payment or, or send that payment to the bank, you don't have access to it. Mm -hmm. Whereas with a line of credit, a line of credit is revolving. So it's a two-way lending instrument. 
meaning I could charge up, let's say a credit card, I could rack it up. But then when I pay it down, I send in the payment and pay that thing down. Well, guess what? It's revolving. I now, now that available credit's there again, and I can use that line of credit. Mm. And so what we're doing with velocity banking is we are leveraging lines of credit to pay down our loans a little bit more rapidly. Okay. Mm. And you know, again, again, I don't want to get too deep, right? You know, again, some folks may have already seen some of the videos and training. There's, there's some stuff on YouTube, but um, we're essentially using that line of credit to make what we call a chunk payment. Um, chunk payment. Correct. So, like, let's say you have that mortgage, right? Don't and hold back, question. Mike. Don't hold back, brother, because I promise you, I feel like I'm a finance guy and I didn't, I, don't, I can't, like, you can define and quantify this stuff, but I had no idea. Yeah. Well, I'll give you a, I'll give you a story. And um, this is one of my uh, one of my students, and this is somebody that came in, and we had worked with her, and this was back when we were. She was uh, wanted to learn about real estate, and she kind of got involved in our whole system, and so <laughs> she was going to be buying a house, and so she started learning a little bit more about this concept, and she's like, okay, I'm going to be closing on a property here in a couple of months. What do I need to do to where I can save money and interest? And so what we did is she took the right steps to get, and she already had decent credit but we got her credit up to almost 800. And so she was able to qualify for a 0% interest. Like people get these balance transfer credit card offers, right? And you get these checks in the mail from the bank and it's like transfer a balance. Most people throw them in the shredder, right? And, and, and again, if you don't have a strategy for them, yeah, put them in the shredder. Um, but when you got a, a huge loan that's gonna have a bunch of interest, you know, these 0% interest offers are gold. They're gold. We just don't know how to take advantage of them. Um, and so what we had her do is she was $30,000 limit, 0% wow. interest for 18 months, 0%. And so right when she closed on her property, um, the very first month, she was able to write a check. She wrote it to herself. It drew on the line like a normal transaction. So not a cash advance, um, not, not an extra fee for cash advance, anything like that. It was like a normal transaction and sent that 25 G's directly to her fresh mortgage. And again, at the beginning of the mortgage, that's when you're paying the highest percentage of your payment in interest. And so by sending in that 25 grand, she was able to knock down her principal balance down to here, mm. slide that debt onto the 0% interest line. Mm -hmm. That maneuver right there saved her over 50 grand in interest off the life wow. of that loan. Now every payment that she makes is, is attacking the loan down here instead of attacking it up here. Mm -hmm. Now she's attacking it here. And then she's just applying her additional cash flow every single month to pay down that line of credit. Nice. I love that. The fact that you're talking about, well, Mike, I think, man, help. how do we get over this thing? I'm written in the book. Once again, another book I'm reading urgent and important versus urgent and unimportant. A lot of urgent stuff, noise coming in our ears, yeah. but what you're talking about is so important, but it's not urgent. You know, there's nobody saying, Hey, Make, make sure you put a little extra here. Or make sure maybe you get a lot. There's no a little buzzer there in the back of our minds. Mike, what can you give us for that to kind of help us get over that hump? Well, that that's it's it's a you know, for the banks and for the government, they want people to have a certain level of complacency, right? Mm -hmm. Um, 30 year loan, it's like, oh, that's a long term thing. You don't gotta worry. Just you know, get you, you know, we'll get you a three, four percent rate, you know, you just sit there, make that minimum payment and Coast it out for 30 years. And, and you're right, you know, that you know, no one else is going to tell you that that's important or urgent. You know, uh, that's one thing that you need to see for yourself. And that's where diving into the numbers, you know, look at your loan. You know, look at what this loan is actually going to cost you. It's not just the monthly payment that it's going to cost you. You know, number one, there was fees to originate. But then number two, over the life of that loan, how much money and in interest are you going to fork over to the bank? Gotcha. Um, if you want to recover some of that, and, and for me, that's that just Huge. blows me out of the water, yeah, right? Yeah. Like when we bought our first house, I didn't know about this. And it's like, so if I did, I would have been making some chunk payments quick because if I would have been able to chunk it down a few times, instead of having to kind of drive through those first four years, you know, typically mm -hmm. it's those first four years that are just brutal on, yeah. on interest. Yeah, mentally too. Yeah, you're just sending in all that money and the, and the debt's not, it's just barely going down, just barely. And you're sending out all this money. And so, you know, again, that's where you got to create the urgency based on who you are and based on your goals. Um, but if you want to recover some of that interest and not just give it to the banks, because that's all we're doing is we're just giving it to the banks. 
if you can recover that and you have a different way to invest it, it becomes very important <laughs> to save right. that money and in interest. So too bad. Uh, what would you tell your 20 or 25 year old self, Mike, now that you know this information here, what could you go back in time? Maybe for your first house, or I don't know, when you were first getting into debt after college, or I don't know, what would you? Yeah, well, it'd, it'd be to I'd definitely not be as afraid. Because again, we're taught to be afraid of credit cards, mm -hmm. right? We're taught to be afraid, like lines of credit are bad, loans are good. That's mm -hmm. kind of what we're taught. You know, take out that student loan, you know, take out that mortgage loan. It's you know, white picket fence, it's the American dream. You want that loan. Loans are good. Like we are, it's framed like that. Loans are good. But in the end, you know, and yes, we need to utilize loans. We need to leverage loans, but we need to take some time to understand how they work and how expensive they actually are. That is how banks make their money is charging interest on loans. So, of course, they are going to push us like, let's get you a loan. Let's get you a loan. Um, and then they teach you to kind of fear um, an actual tool, right? Like, mm -hmm. and obviously loan can be used as a tool, but a line of credit is a tool. And, mm -hmm. and again, we're taught to just kind of leave those alone. You know, people make bad decisions with them. They buy big screen TVs. And again, if you're going to rack up debt, you know, buying big screen TVs and, and put that on a credit card. Yeah. I mean, you're, that's, you know, just like any tool, like a hammer and nails, right? In the fix and flip world, it's like, you know, uh, you know, me with a hammer and nails, uh, not so safe, right? That's, that's a scary tool because I'm terrible at that stuff. Uh, let, let the contractor handle it. Uh, but once you learn me how too. to do it, you can build a house. Gotcha. You know? So lines of credit, not to fear lines of credit and definitely not to hold back with taking the time to learn this stuff because nobody is going to come to your house, Chris, and say, here's how loans work. You know, no one's going to show up at your school or your college and say, hey, here's how you actually calculate credit card interest or here's mm -hmm. how you actually figure out what you're actually going to pay on that loan. They're mm -hmm. not going to teach that to you. So just the importance of self-education around financial literacy. Self-education around finance. Wow, that's a good statement, Mike. You got some one-liners, bro. I do. <laughs> around finance. Well, I, I'm thinking about myself, Mike. When I first bought my one of my first houses, I had tenants in my other two bedrooms. I had a three-bedroom renting out both bedrooms. I was bringing in a thousand dollars of rent. My payment was nine hundred. I'm thinking to myself, Chris, why didn't you pay extra back then mm -hmm. <laughs> when I first bought it? Yeah. I was like living like, well, I don't have any mortgage payment. All my tenants are paying a mortgage. Like, I'm thinking like, Chris, why didn't you just take line of credit, pay it down then when other people were paying? Anyway, it's just so much. So many, you know, I was thinking like, I'm such crazy now. I'm older. I'm looking back like, good God, all I can do is help others because time has passed for me. Yeah. No, we just want to pay it forward. I mean, that's that's where I'm at. You know, it's like I really just want to pay it forward. You know, people don't. Again, we're just not taught these kind of concepts. Mm -hmm. And once I started learning about them, it's like, you know, I felt like I was, you know, in the W2 world, I felt like I was doing good. Like we were making 100, 150K a year, like, you know, a good job. You know, mm -hmm. it's like we were kind of grinding up that corporate ladder. Like in my last job, I was there for 15 straight years. Same company. Wow. You're a great, great guy. Years. I know they loved you. That was great. <laughs> you know, I, I was a very good corporate drone for them. And uh, they made a lot of money. And I trained all their salespeople. So I, I you know, yeah, I mean, it was, it was great for them. I was a really good company man. And I thought that we were doing everything right. You know, we went to school, we got the grades, we got the degrees, we got good jobs, we we're making good money. But why were we broke every month? Wow. Why are we still broke? You know, making 100 plus grand. And, and again, I wasn't, you know, I'm not, you know, P. Diddy, you know, like up in the club, you know, popping bottles. Like that's that's not who I am at all. You know, so it's like we live pretty normal. And uh -huh. but we still just didn't have a lot left over. And that's what how where a lot of people are at, you know, because again, we we are not taught these things. We're not taught to think about money any deeper than just paying our bills with it month to month and, and moving on to the next month. Unreal. The bank and the government, that's where they prefer to keep us. Are you right? I'm like, I f anyway, yeah, you're right. I'm glad you're saying that. They prefer to keep us that way. They keep yeah. us in a box, right? I'm yes. thinking about the Rockefellers of the world. Yeah. Right. It's up to us to kind of say, oh, Mike, I'm like, I guess one of one has to just say, you know what? 
This is what I will do. I will make it a point to study this stuff if I want to walk in the path of the wealthy. Is that where it is? Well, you know what, man? I mean, that's where it starts. You know, um, I, I, you know, and, and I hate to make guarantees, you know, but I'm sure when it comes to like your real estate investing, I mean, you had to go seek out that information, you know, to learn how to get into properties and start doing them and build a team and all that. I did. Again, we're not taught any of that. We're taught, you know, pa pass the test in school and focus on being perfect and never making mistakes. Well, as an entrepreneur, that doesn't work, you know, mm -hmm. because as an entrepreneur, you need to make mistakes in order to learn, in order to grow. Yeah. Um, you know, you need to go out there and seek out additional partners, uh, expand your network, things like that. So these are things that are just counter to what we're taught in school, <clears throat> which is kind of do it yourself. You know, what's the old saying? If you want something done right, you got to do it yourself. Do it yourself. Yeah. That's do it yourself. That's and so and how do you build a business like that? You don't. <laughs> you don't. <laughs> you know, because, you, you, uh, yeah, I mean, you're just going to stretch yourself way too thin and not get to where you really want to be. So, yeah, I mean, it's up to us to take the action. You know, if you want things to be different in life, you got to do something different than what everybody else is doing. That's right. I try to do the opposite, man. I try to remind myself, Chris, make sure you have to just stay focused on the numbers. Look at the numbers. Yes. So round up, uh, we got Mike Adams here. Thanks for joining us. Get your questions in on the box. Mike is going to give us a gift. He's uh, got a, a mini course that he put together for us. Mike, you're going to no doubt give him a round up, homies. Something special for us in this quarantine time. Yes. Yeah, you want, me, you want me to talk about that a little bit right now? Yeah. I want, how can we get more information about putting all this stuff together? I need my people out of debt. I'll tell you, Mike, I do these intake calls, right, for clients. Yeah. And my temperature goes up when I see big mortgage, new house, couple new cars, new baby, credit cards through the roof, mm -hmm. income barely covering all this crap. Mm -hmm. And I have to hold back. You know, I can't look down or up on anybody i just kind of kind of take it in and i'm like you know what there's no reason for this there has to be there's there's some underlining something going on in the general public that this is just like a recurrent it's like it's like a you know it's just boom 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 like a wave of a wave of them i'm like yeah. do you see i guess you when i see i'm like do you see are you do you see this but i you know i have to kind of respectively treat them with empathy and be compassionate about it all because i was there too yeah. I was there too, spending every penny that I made, popping bottles, doing craziness until I understood, like, man, they're going to keep me broke for the rest of my life if I do this. That's right. What you got? What did you tell, what, what is your, tell us about your little mini course, Mike. <clears throat> sure. Um, well, the mini course is essentially just, I, I, I call it like in the military, we had a TM, right, which is the instruction manual for vehicles and things like that. So you do your maintenance. So this is the, the TM or the instruction manual for how to implement this strategy. Um, really just laid out in a step-by-step -step format. Um, on my YouTube channel, I have plenty of videos that kind of give the overview of Velocity Banking, kind of what it's all about, how the technique works in general. But then, you know, it comes to, it's like, okay, great concept, Mike. That's really cool. How do I actually implement this thing? Like, how do I actually do it for my strategy and my situation? Mm -hmm. And so that's what the course is. Because, uh, you know, in my YouTube, you know, I got some illustrations and I give examples, things like that. But what if your cash flow is different, right? What if your expenses are different than the example? How do you still put this thing into practice? Mm -hmm. And so that's what the course is, is just kind of walking somebody through kind of the, uh, the the basic framework. Like, here's all the things you want to have in place before you start. Here's what the, the things that you need to be thinking about. And then here's the action steps to take and the order in which to take them. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, allowing for the most rapid debt payoff um, and the highest amount of interest savings. Nice. Nice. So round up, Mike's giving us a link. You know, uh, he, the link is going to be in the video description below. And Mike has been so generous to give us a quarantine discount on that course. Mike, it's not a lot done already, but tell us about it, Mike. Yeah, um, typically the course goes for $97. Um, and again, a bunch of training videos and content in there, a lot. Um, and if you dive into it, it'll save you a ton of money and interest on your loans. Uh, but for my man, Chris, and his audience, um, we're doing $50 off. Um, as a discount. So he's got his coupon code right there. If you put that in, uh, we'll knock the price down by $50. So that way you can get your hands on the mini course for less than 50 bucks, so $47 um, to get Thanks. the mini course. And from there, you can start implementing this. Um, now is a really good time for it. I mean, with people that I'm talking to, a lot of folks, 
and again, this is, you know, uh, other people have uh, varying opinions of this. You know, with a lot of folks, they are wanting to grow right now, um, but at more, the same point, there's a more. Yes, I got to make more money. You know, I, I I was just talking to somebody, um, and this is a doctor, right? This is a, I don't even know. Dead matter, right? I don't even know what I'm talking dead about. Matter. But <laughs> so much debt, um, like millions and millions and millions of dollars in debt, and he's wanting to buy property. Like he wanted to invest in property. And, you know, not that there's anything wrong with that. And, and, you know, I mean, there's strategies that are still working right now, even in this climate to where you can yep. still get paid. Um, but for the uninformed investor, like somebody who's new and they just kind of want to, I got 400 grand, I just want to park it over here, you know, th that maybe now is not the right time, especially when we're sitting on, in, in that situation, literally millions of dollars in debt um, at high interest. And oh, so we are repositioning that. Um, and, and the goal is to help him knock down those loans and create that equity. Because again, we don't know what's going to happen with the market. We don't know if values are going to go down. We don't, there, there's just a lot going on there. So what action can you take? Like if you're uncertain about pulling the trigger on this or that, what action can you take right now that you know will benefit your situation? And if you're sitting on piles of debt, eliminating that debt load you know it's it's hard to not call that a win when you're getting rid of debt that's costing you money i think that it will for me now I, every month i'm just whacking away principal i'm 44 you know it's it's almost like a muscle memory my, i get in my car i drive to the bank i take the check and when i, I take it i'm like here you go boom here you go boom and then when they see me coming they're like they already know what i'm doing mm-hmm almost like a muscle memory to get used to doing it. I, I think yeah. the hardest part for me, Mike, was to start because there's no gratification. You get nothing. Oh, I'm sorry. No instant gratification. Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> you got it, though. And and that's that's part of the programming, right? Like that's part of the, the programming of the banks and the government. It's like if it's not going to give you instant gratification, don't pay too much attention to it. Right. <laughs> Uh, and again, that keeps you stuck like Chuck for 30 years, you know, paying on a mortgage. Um, and even more than that, right? You know, they want you to refinance that bad boy. Mm. You know, they want you to pay on it when it's the most expensive time, make that minimum payment. Don't send any extra principal. Don't worry about that. Um, don't do velocity bank. Don't do anything. Just send us that minimum payment for five years. And then they call you up and say, hey, I got a great deal for you, Chris. Let's refinance. Let's, let's pull that equity out so you can blow it on whatever right and then reset your loan and now mm. you're right back here again That's and then they do it again and they do it again and then you know and you're essentially just giving back that equity to the bank over stuck. and over and over again stuck stuck like chuck <laughs> and chuck's broke <laughs> Round up. Get your questions in for Mike. I'm so glad you're delivering this message, Mike. I mean, I think, well, my people need to hear this because I'm talking, you know, God, everybody I meet, they want more, more, more. I want to do more, more. I'm like, mm, I don't know. Let's look at what you got first. Mm -hmm. and in my opinion, Mike, uh, the universe won't bless us until we have mastered what we have. But for, for me, it didn't like it didn't. I didn't get more mm -hmm. until I was like, OK, boom, 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 I got these set up. What's next? And when I was trying to get more and I could barely handle what I had, I was like juggling all the stuff, you know? And then I felt out, then I got a groove, like, okay, I already got one house, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It was like, okay, now I understand how to do that. More, I got more room to, to get more as opposed to just always looking for more. What can yeah. we do with what we have? You know, I, to that point, man, I would say yeah, that's a mindset thing for sure. And, and it's it's fine to want more, but you don't want to over leverage yourself. And mm -hmm. like thinking about the doctor I was just talking about, it's like, you know, so he wants to put money over here, but he's got all this debt. It's like, and and what do you want to do? He wanted to buy more debt. He wanted to get more debt. And so it's like, so you want another loan over here. You got more debt service now. And now it's like you're over leveraged. Mm -hmm. And that's not a good spot to be, you know? Um, just think about what's going on right now. You know, if you were over leveraged walking into this, you know, uh, Corona and all of a sudden, you know, maybe you got property, but people aren't paying rent now, you know, and, and all this stuff is going on. That's real. If you didn't have some reserves built up and you still got all these loans due. Mm -hmm. It's a beast. You know? It's a beast. Well, Mike, thank you for your time. It's been 40 minutes. Let me see what questions we got, my brother. You got time to do some Q&A? I do. 
Um, and can I throw one more thing out there? Oh, go ahead, Mike. I'm sorry. Yeah, I got round up. Just download this course. Go. Yeah, one more little bit. You know, just about um, mortgages right now, and I'm actually putting on a video on my channel where I'm be talking about kind of this this mouse trap called mortgage forbearances, right? Mortgage um, forbearances. Break that down, Mike, for my roundupers that don't know what a mortgage forbearance is. <clears throat> oh, okay. So, so All right, get temperature down. Get you some ice. Yeah, let me get. Let me get something. I gotta get a fan on in here. Um, <laughs> all the fans are put away because we just got rid of the snow, but. Uh, <laughs> So this forbearance, so like with with Corona going on, you know, the, they're they're offering uh, these forbearances where you can stop making your mortgage payments for up to most banks are doing like three months, um, and what people are getting confused on, right? Like uh, a forbearance is okay, you don't have to pay for this amount of time, but then when it's time to pay, you got to get caught up, right? So let's say you missed three months payments, and now it's month four. Okay, you got to make your payment. But you also owe us the three that you missed in a lump sum. Mm. A lot of people are intertwining deferment with forbearance, where deferment is where you're taking like those three payments and sticking them on the back end of the loan, right? Mm -hmm. So then when you gotta start paying, you're just making payments again. And now you've okay. just made the loan a little longer. So that's a deferment. But people are getting forbearances and they're gonna owe this lump sum um, at the end of the four months. And the thing that's really scaring me about that is at the end of the four months, okay, let's say you don't have that lump sum. Maybe you're not back to work yet or your, your, your rents aren't coming in, whatever the case may be, and you're not able to get caught up. Now you're at the mercy of the bank. Mm -hmm. You know, they're going to do a review, right? They're going to do a review on you and see if you're as lendable as you were before. Mm -hmm. And if you are and they think there's some hope there, sure, they might give you more forbearance time with a bigger lump sum owed a little bit, little bit later, give you a little bit more time mm -hmm. there. Um, but they might push you into a modification, which could mess up your credit. Um, and certainly they might push some people that they're like, look, you're no longer lendable. You might be looking at a short sale. You might be looking at getting foreclosed on when, when the bank can do it. You know, I just don't want people to get it twisted with the banks are being told that they have to do this, right? I, I did some research. I, I was looking for a time in history where banks were all good with people not making their mortgage payments. I when was that? I couldn't find it. I didn't see oh, it. Oh, really? Yeah, I, didn't, I didn't see it. Like where, where banks were okay with people not making their payments. Like the banks always want their payments. Like there's wars going on. There's, you know, recessions going on. It doesn't matter. Banks want their money. And so this is one of those things that's, you know, because of, you know, the, the stimulus and the CARES Act, things like that. Yes, they have to offer these forbearances. But when, if the, if, when the banks get a chance to foreclose and the banks get a chance um, to take your equity. Oh, yeah. They will. Yeah. Don't don't think for a second that they won't. You know, the good old wholesome bank. And I know we see the commercials on TV where it's you know Wells Fargo and they got the family and the kids and it's all wholesome, right? As long as you're paying. <laughs> yes. As long as you're paying the they have the a guy on the side of those commercials like oh, all this is good. As long as you pay. Yeah. Uh, cut back to the commercial. That's in the small print down at the very bottom, as long as you pay. <laughs> I never thought about that, Mike. So it's just something oh, to be man. aware of. I mean, if you can make your mortgage payments, that's the one. To me, that's always the most important bill is like the one that keeps the roof over your head. That's the most important. If you're able to make that payment, do it. Um, but just be aware. If you do have to do this forbearance thing, just be aware of those terms um, and be aware that you might owe that lump sum and what might happen after that if you're no longer considered lendable. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yep. Round up. Go to the link below. Download Mike's mini course. Um, we, he, I negotiated a fifty dollar discount for you to get you in, and I think this is so important. My mentor tells me earning money, offense, managing money, defense, yep. defense. And I'm not a sports guy, but I have seen defense win games. You know, I I know nothing about sports, football, none of it. Mm. But the defense can be a beast. I mean, if, and that's why I'm here today because of defense. Just what are we doing with what we earn? And I didn't think about it till I got older, Mike. I don't know about you. Did you? It didn't even. Did it even cross your mind? No. No. In my twenties, it was just all about make more money. You know, it was it was just make more money, sell more. You know, I was coming out of the military, so I was I was just like, go. I just want to make money, 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 money. And again, not much to show for it. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Because the money came in, and because I wasn't tracking it, because I, and again, you know, not casting blame, right? Like, 
again, we're not taught this stuff. Like we're not taught to think about money. Mm -hmm. Rich people teach their kids to think about money, right? Like wealthy people teach their kids like, look, you know, here's the school's going to teach you this, but I'm going to teach you about money. That's right. right. So, so some folks did learn about money, like from their parents and they, they understood some of these things, but most people, again, they're taught what I was taught. You know, the only thing I know about money is that we didn't have enough. And so my mentality was go make more money, you know, without thinking about all this stuff on the back end. I'm teaching my kids this stuff. It's hard to get over that kid barrier too. They're like, dad, why are you always talking about money? I'm like, if you don't talk about it, you won't have any. That's right. Round up, get your questions in. Scott, uh, Mike, how do you use the debt tool to make the payment without incurring the processing fees? For example, bank transfer costs, bank transfer costs free. I guess Visa is a fee, MasterCard has a fee. Oh, okay, I th th do you know what he's talking about, Mike? These fees he's talking yeah, about? Yeah, I think so. Go yeah, well, sometimes there's what's called like a balance transfer fee, you know? So like, let's say I was using my Discover card and I was going to chunk my student loan or chunk my mortgage. Um, again, depending on the terms of your line of credit, and, and I'll, I'll preface this with not all lines of credit are created equally. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like when you go to the bank, like if you go on, like, let's say Bank of America on their website, you know, they have all kinds of different credit cards, right? Like they got their points credit card. They got their mileage credit card. They also have their balance transfer credit card, right? So they have all these different cards depending on how somebody's going to use it. And so the preference um, for this strategy, since we're going to be doing chunks, which is basically balance transfers, we want the balance transfer type of card that that bank is offering. Okay, so yeah. start with that. Um, the next thing is uh, sometimes there will be fees. Typically, when you open a balance transfer <coughs> card, what we're really looking for are the ones that will give us zero percent interest for x amount of months okay so if you can get zero percent interest for 15 months or 18 months you know many times for the first three to six months that you have that line open you can do your transfers at zero fee okay so that allows you to do some zero fees zero interest chunking now if there is a fee right typically the balance transfer fee will be anywhere from two to five percent depending on the line so if I was going to do a $10,000 chunk on my student loan or a $10,000 chunk on my mortgage, that would cost me anywhere from $200 to $500, right, uh, to do that. And if you do have to pay that fee, all you got to do is really just add that to your numbers, right? Here's a way to do the quick math. Like if you're going to take your mortgage balance from $200,000, let us say, and we're going to do a $10,000 chunk down to ninety dollars or one hundred ninety. dollars Think about all that room right there. There's all these payments that were in here. You can calculate how much interest you're saving by making the chunk. Okay. So if I see like like um in Cece's example, the one I gave you, when she sent in the 25 grand, you know, by dropping her balance down to here, she was able to kind of skip over all these wow. payments that were in here and all that fixed interest. Right. <clears throat> so even if there was a two percent fee, you know, or or you know, a two percent fee, she would have paid. Da, 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 an extra, you know, five hundred bucks, you know, to do her transfer. But she's over the over the time, though, it's, I mean, that five hundred dollars, you can still spread that out too, though, paying it back, right? That's right. Yeah, it essentially, would just kind of get added to the line, and then again, you're using your cash flow to pay that down. So, uh, yeah, I mean, so you just got to do the math, and does the fee still make sense versus the amount of interest that's being saved by making the chunk? Mm hmm. Good question, Scott. Good question. Round up, get your questions in from Mike here. It, I think, I don't know, Mike, I'm presuming when you talk to people, you can see the holes. You can see the challenges that they're going in, I guess, now at this stage of your life, as opposed to earlier. I mean, when I, when people come in, I can I can see it like it's plain as day. You know, I'm presuming that you're the same when you, when you see the different numbers. Yeah. Yeah, like when I get on the phone with somebody, like before I, like if someone books a consultation with me, um, uh, my system will send them a budgeting sheet and because I want them to take some time like before we get on the phone so that way we can get into the brass tacks and really get into the details it's like fill this thing out so that way you know where your money's <laughs> going like if you haven't been paying attention to that let's pay attention to it right now before we get on right this now. call so that way I can give you the most benefit and and we're not going through your budget we're more talking about what to do you know so yeah, I mean, because I can see it. Like when I get on the phone with somebody, I have a big dry erase board. 
in my office here and I just start, I start writing it out. So that way I have a visual picture of kind of what's going on here, nice. where, where their, where their money's going, kind of where they're bleeding money, you know, what's costing them. There's some mm -hmm. formulas that I use to evaluate the loans themselves <clears throat> to determine which ones are the biggest drains on our cash flow. We want to okay. patch those up quickly. So nice. yeah, I can see it. You know, once I'm on the phone with somebody and they break it down, I can absolutely see it. Cool. Cool. Get your questions in, round up, and don't forget to head over to Mike's site below. The link is in the video description. He's giving us a $50 discount on his infinite banking system mini course. I promise you, round up. This, 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 this is why I'm here today. Defense. What are you doing with the money that you got coming in? What are you doing with it? Brian, this is a life changing strategy. I love it. Good for you, Brian. Yeah. Brian, oh, no one told us what to do with the money after to get the degree. That's true. Of course not. You know, that's that's a part of the, you know, the big banks and uh, the government's play. You know, what, what's really, and it sounds bad, right? I mean, uh, sometimes it, it sounds bad to say certain things, but I like to keep it real. You know, but the bottom line is it, it benefits the government and it benefits the banks for us to be buried in debt. As sick as that sounds, it sounds sick, right? But it benefits the banks, obviously, because they get to make money on the interest. But it benefits the government as well, because guess what? Like when you get out of college, the first thing you're thinking about is like, okay, I got this debt where I'm paying interest here. I need to go get a job. Mm -hmm. And when you get that W-2 job, guess what? You get to pay taxes. Right? So <laughs> even though I made a lot of money at my job, I was the taxes were crazy. Like when you start making 125, 150K a year, and again, it's been six years now since I've been in the W-2 arena. <clears throat> um, but gosh, I mean, taxes are just... They're, 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 it's a big chunk of money. Uh, yeah. And that money goes right to the government. God, oh. I don't want to get you started, Mike. I got to get me all fired up, man. Because <laughs> there, there's literally a whole system working against us, trying Invisible. to broke. Yes. It's like The Matrix, right? The movie The Matrix is like, it's all happening around you, but you don't see it because it's just the, the system. It's just the way it is. And so, yeah, I mean, they want you to pay on that student loan for 20 years. You know, they want you to refinance it because the longer they keep you doing that, it feeds the banks and it feeds the government tax revenue. Jermaine is saying if your yearly salary doesn't equal your student loans, college failed you. What is your opinion? I'm not You don't have to go there, but uh, Patrick Bed David wrote a book, Drop Out of College and Get Schooled. What's your opinion on college now? I have a degree. You would did you you came out you graduated your degree? Uh, my wife does. Uh, I joined the military. I'm an army. Oh, guy. Okay, so, so I'm just I'm saying, what is your opinion on college nowadays? I'm looking at my school is fifty thousand a year. I'm like, mm, Hampton University. Good lord, that's a lot of money. <laughs> like, that's the first thing I think. Uh, you know, the bottom line is this. You know, I think there's obviously a benefit in um, further education, of course. Um, but look at school as more, because again, we're taught, go to school, get good grades, get a degree, get a great job, and then work there forever, and, and it's all going to be all good, right? And that's kind of what we're, what we're taught. Like, that was the financial strategy I was kind of taught, you know, just do that and everything's just going to kind of work out. And what we're seeing <laughs> now is that that's not the case. Um, I think with everything going on, you know, I think a lot of companies are going to be, you know, kind of, you know, looking down. to... Yeah, you know, going lean and mean. You know, do we need all these people working here? You know, do we need all this office space? You know, do we need all this? Can we automate some of this? Because they've been forced to do it over these last couple of months. You know, so I, I felt like there was a wave of change that was going to be coming to where it's like even people with some degrees that got good jobs right now could be automated um, <laughs> you know, over the next couple of years. And that might be coming even sooner. So you know, you can look at college as, yes, you're going to learn. You know, I, I have nothing negative to say about college <clears throat> per se, as far as the learning and even, maybe even more importantly, the networking, yeah. um, which again, you're not really taught to network. Um, it's sit there, do your work, get your degree, walk across the stage. It's like, mm -hmm. no, 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 take advantage and, and look up and look at potential future business partners around you and good people that you can connect with. Yeah. So. Definitely take advantage of all those different things, but you just can't look at a college degree anymore as the be all end all. Life is going to be all good as long as you got this piece of paper on the wall. Because I know a lot of people with lots of papers on the wall that are broke. Broke. 
<laughs> I'm not laughing at them. I'm laughing at the. Uh, I'm, I'm, I guess my spirit is saying, let's really take this serious. Let's take this serious. Because my growing up for me it was like going to college. My dad was like college or military college. I mean, it was like beat. He never said, Chris, maybe be an entrepreneur. No. I mean, <laughs> not at all. Yeah. So you're like me, man. I was not. There were no entrepreneurs in my family. <laughs> okay. Well, hopefully, I'm just like the message that we're giving our children. My kids are like entrepreneur. That's, that, they know what it is now. At, at seven, you know, mm -hmm. so, you know, just the route of college, college, college. You know, so David, if you have a loan on a home with almost no equity, where can I get a line of credit? The question: How can we utilize this strategy to get their mortgage down? Because so if I have almost no equity, where I can't get a line of credit. How can we utilize the strategy? So um, depending on your credit, you may not need equity, right? So when we're talking about equity, that's where we're uh, kind of looking at like a home equity line of credit, which that's is one. one tool that you could use for this strategy, but it's not the only tool. Okay. And, and I brought up um, with Cece, she used a discover card, a credit card. Okay. And the credit card had really good terms, had a great introductory offer. 0% 18 months. And again, you can get that still. Um, the HELOCs, you know, right now with the HELOC, and then personally, just, just personally, I prefer using 0% interest balance transfer credit cards for this strategy. Uh, number one, it's not tied to your home equity, right? So if you know, if, you know if, if, if everything just hit the fan, right? Uh, you know, it's it's on an, an unsecured debt versus a secured debt, so they can't come after you. Um, that that's you know one piece. But then secondly, is that you can get the zero percent interest. You're never going to get zero percent interest on a HELOC. You know, mm -hmm. typically they'll give you maybe they'll give you a low intro, like maybe one point nine for six months, and maybe two point nine for <coughs> a year. But then it's going to go up to five nine nine or six nine nine, something like that percent. Um, so there's always going to be interest there. And again, it's completely attached to the equity in your property. Yeah. Um, banks are getting tight now on the lending, especially when it comes to HELOCs. I think it was Chase Bank. They're not even taking applications right now for HELOCs. And that's what's got me thinking, right? That's, that's what has me thinking even more so. Like the banks know what might be coming, right? You know, with people remember the forbearance thing. Um, mm -hmm. I think that could potentially lead to short sales. It could potentially lead to foreclosure, bankruptcies. And, mm -hmm. you know, if there's short sales and foreclosures, that's going to drive down the price of houses. So if you had some equity and then the value of your house goes down, well, now you, now you don't have that equity. Yeah. And so they can't give out these lines thinking that your equity is not going to be there to support it. So um, for you, David, I would look at looking into a 0% interest balance transfer credit card that you could use for this scenario. Nice. Good one. Yeah, David, uh, you, uh, he has the skills to do this, but he, you're going to, you're going to be able to, once you get his course there, you're going to get his email address you, and you'll be on his email. You'll be able to contact with him and somebody reach out to you, uh, Mike, if they want to do a strategy session with you or something like that. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and they can get it on the website. So if they follow your link, I mean, that's going to bring them to, um, website and there's some options in there like if they want the course and they want a phone call like i'm happy to jump on the phone with people um and kind of walk them through because some people do want the additional help with like a custom plan like you know maybe they got a unique scenario or or they just want the clarity you know the course will definitely help with clarity but some people just want that extra and want to get on the phone with somebody so yeah you do have the ability to do that uh through chris's link cool Thomas, uh, once you pay off the credit line, might they offer a higher line of credit at 0%, Mike? Now you're talking my language, my friend. Uh, yeah, great question, Thomas. And and the answer is yes, you know, because a couple of factors, right? Number one is you're reducing your debt level, right? So you're reducing your, your overall debt level, which is, you know, strengthens your credit profile. And, you know, to that point, they might offer you um, you might be able to get a new line of credit. So like when somebody makes, uh, let's say a 0% interest chunk, like let's say you got 18 months at 0% interest, you make your chunk. And what I teach you in the course is when it comes to like, okay, I want to make a chunk, but how much should I chunk up? It depends on your monthly cash flow. And so if we have 18 months of 0% interest, we want to make a chunk, 
that your cash flow will, will allow you to pay off within that time just so that way you never end up paying interest on the credit card right that's crazy and so before you make that next chunk right if that time is run out what i teach people is to either uh is to renegotiate or reapply before you raise and repeat right so before you make the next chunk it's like okay let's call the bank back and say hey you know i'd love to keep you this line of credit can i get more time at zero percent interest nice and since your profile has gotten stronger they may extend it to you or if they don't if the bank don't uh and your credit has only gotten stronger there is another bank that will and so uh, we can roll from one zero percent interest offer to the next to the next to the next nice. and keep doing zero percent interest chunking that is cool roundup thanks for hanging out with hanging out with us today with mike adams um real estate is just one piece of the equation you can buy all the houses you want but if you don't know what you're going to do with the money i promise you you are just going you're just in a, you're still in the rat race even with rental properties with me it's like i know i have to and i just think it makes us a better person when you know where the money's going to go jim Rohn was like hire him he knows where he doesn't know where all the money goes <laughs> that really stuck in my mind man yeah stuck in my mind we can't hire you you don't know where all it, where it all go where did because people are like, where does it all go? Right. Now at this stage of my life, Mike, I'm like, I know where it's going. It's going here. Right. We're doing that. But boom, we're there. We're that. I know where it's going. Yeah, you got to plan for it. It's an old saying: if you don't plan, you plan to it's essentially planning to fail. <laughs> it's something like that. Yeah, you plan. know? Yes, that's that's it. I mean, and now you've got it. Um, and that that's that's why we're here. You know, it's helping people make a plan for their money because again you can't just i mean you, you can just go out there and make money and, and i think there are some people uh maybe there's that that's random rare success story where they just focus only on making money and they made so much money that it just didn't matter right that's a but few most people, people i think we all <laughs> i think we all think well let me ask you that was, i thought i was gonna be that guy i'm gonna make so much man i ain't even gonna think about it oh yeah I mean, I mean, not not to bring the, not to bring up anyone, not to get political, but I remember reading one of Trump's books when I was a kid. You know what I mean? And I was like, I'm just gonna make this money. You know, I, I just want to go out there and make money, money, money. I want to be a millionaire and just have all this cash, and then everything's gonna be great. That's don't worry about it, right? Yeah, yeah, it, it'll work itself out, right? And how many people do you hear about that make a lot of money and then a year later they're broke because they weren't paying attention to the back end? Man, I just saw, I know you're not a sports guy, but I just saw Mike Tyson is going to box again. I saw something on the, on, on YouTube where he's throwing mitts and, and uh, he's going he's to do another, some boxing. And I was like, is it because of that money? And he's got to get out there and work again? That is true. That is true. Boy, thing. That's terrible, man. All so, right, Mike. Yeah, Anything else you want to leave us? Final thoughts so we get you out of here. Round, I don't see any more questions. Round up. Make sure you head over to the link in the video description. Get Mike's mini course. You got some, you got some secrets, Mike. I just heard you talk some stuff. I, you started talking some jargon there. Yeah. Well, there, there's there's a lot. You know, I mean, you know how it is. I mean, when the mind starts going, the ideas start flowing. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so I don't know. I'm I'm just excited to be here and share. You know, whatever I can with, with you and, and your audience and. Uh, hopefully people got value out of the message and out of some of the things that we discussed today. Um, there's certainly a lot to learn. You know, I just kind of grazed over some of the concept and whatnot. For those that got it, excellent. You know, and, and if you want some more support, the course is there for you. If they need more training, uh, again, maybe we can make a link. I have free videos. I have a YouTube channel as well that people yeah. can plug into for additional free training. We talk about credit. We talk about debt reduction. We talk about business ownership on that channel. And so, you know, if they're looking for some more free support, that's available for them as well. Thank you so much. Okay. That's all I got for you, my friend, Mike. And uh, I guess we, if you want to leave a final thought just for people that are in debt and need to kind of make that switch, because it starts here. I know people say it's in my, you know, mindset, but it, it, I got to say it, it starts here. Yeah. Uh, number one message I'd give them is take action. Right. Um, you know, the debt will not go away on its own. Oh. And especially if like when I was when I was buried in debt, I was stressed out. I mean, it, it was hard to 
I remember it, you know, like being week to week. Like I, I remember it um, when I was at my job. It's like we had all these bills, all this debt. And it's like, OK, we got to got to you got to make it to the, the end of the week. Till we get paid and I can pay all these people and then make it to the next week. And, and, and it was like the same little rat. They call, that's why they call it the rat race. Like you're just spinning your wheels. You know, the only way things will be different is if you do something different. And it's more than just that. You can't just think, you know, I want it to be different. You got to want it to be different. And then you need to take the appropriate action steps to make it happen. Nice. And so even if you think your situation is insurmountable or you're just too buried, it's all over, throw your hands up. It's not over till it's over. Take action in the right direction and you can change things. You can make it better. Nice. I like that message, man. You can make it better. I know some roundup and, you know, just people, I, I, even if you don't own your property roundup, it event, eventually I think there are going to be some unbelievable real estate deals based on what Mike's saying about these mortgage forbearances. I think a lot of people will not make it out of those things. Just a numbers game. A lot of people will, a lot of people won't, you know, I mean, it's just a numbers. Right. You're right. You guys get, uh, even with your lines of credit, get ready to fire over the next year. All right, Mike, thank you so much, my friend. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely, man. It was a pleasure. Yep. Round up. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. Hit that like button. Share with anybody else that could benefit from this information. Velocity Banking. And I will have Preston Haskins on the next broadcast. Y'all see me. Two weeks old now. And uh, he's, oh, he got some good lungs. Got good lungs. <laughs> That's right. All right, everybody. Awesome. Have a great day. I'll hit this stupid button. <laughs>